Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Allison Pontier, and I have the utmost pleasure to introduce you to Senator Molly Cook, who is both the sitting state senator and Democratic nominee for Senate District 15 in Houston, Texas. She's a registered nurse and has worked in the healthcare system for over a decade. Uh, she's an advocate for reproductive rights, accessible public transportation and healthcare, amongst many other important causes, and I am a giant fan. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Allison. That was the entire portfolio. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, reproductive health care has impacted my life so much. It is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, how do reproductive rights benefit all Texans? Yeah, I mean, in general, um, you know, I'm a healthcare professional. I work with doctors, nurses, everybody, all the, all the staff that come together to make a complete healthcare team. And it is sickening, it's twisted, it's frustrating, it's scary that we are not actually able to provide data-driven, clinically proven, you know, best practice healthcare in this state. And I myself had a procedural abortion in 2014 when it was still legal. And I'm, I'm sad every single day that I'm now lucky that that was even available to me when I wanted it, when I needed it. So, um, you know, I experienced the fear in my coworkers of not really knowing what can we say to people, what can we not say to people. Um, we're seeing, you know, people not wanting to do their OB-GYN residencies in this state, which is very scary. Um, people moving out of state to get pregnant, people moving out of state to be able to provide, you know, what their children need, whatever it is. So um, it's, it's overwhelming to know that our government is able to actually make choices for us when it comes to um, comes to care that is that is rooted in data and and you know clinical validation basically. So um, it really permeates into every experience of my life right now. Growing up in Texas, I would have never thought that I would have the opportunity to talk to uh, a, a sitting state senator who's so open about how reproductive health care has changed their life. And for me, it's like very powerful and very emotional. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, You're currently the youngest member of the Texas Senate and the first ever openly queer member of the Texas Senate. So incredible. Do you have <laughs> a message for other young queer people who want to get involved in community organizing and in politics? Yeah. And, and my message is always the same. It is just show up, just start showing up and be deeply in community. It's hard work and you need your people around you. You need to have a safe space in yourself. Um, I had, you know, I'd been through my early twenties by the time I ran and I was in a place where I really, I fully accepted myself. I fully love myself. I had come out by that time. Not that that's a requirement at all, but um, had reached peace about my abortion, about identifying as bisexual, about just who I am as a person. And that was really valuable. And by loving myself and then also having an incredible friend group that organizes with me that I, you know, that I organize with, it really set me up to be successful when I ran. And the reality is when you run, you can always lose. You can always lose. Even if you've been there for 50 years, you could lose. And you have to know who you are on the other side of that regardless. And there's going to be a lot of pressures, um, even in serving, that you've got to be able to withstand. So I think the most important thing is believe in yourself. Just start showing up. It'll surprise you how the path sort of lays, lays out before you as you start walking and moving. And then also just be really deeply in community. And that will, that will set you up for success. I now currently live in New York, but I was uh, raised in Texas. It's a place that I consider my home state. What is a misconception about Texas that you would like to shed light on? I think there's just kind of this idea out there, or I, I, at least I see it on Twitter, which is certainly not real life. It's, it's a piece of real life um, where people say, well, stop voting that way. And it's just really frustrating. Um, sometimes we feel left behind by national funders or we feel left behind by organizations and this sort of leave us as a lost cause. And the reality is there's 28 million people here. We're the energy center of, you know, certainly the U.S. in a big way. And um, there's a lot of industries that call, that call Texas home. And you can't leave us behind because this will be the birthplace and the laboratory of the kind of harmful policy that spreads out across the nation and, you know, impacts 
everything impacts top of ticket, bottom of ticket, every single policy that'll come out of the federal government as well. And so um, I guess what I need people to understand is that we're fighting too. And we also deserve, um, you know, safe health care and the complete spectrum of reproductive health care. We also deserve clean air. We also deserve um, to be disaster resilient. And just because the leadership of a state is making certain decisions, that does not mean that the working people and the regular people actually want that. And so um, I just invite people to be empathetic about what Texans are experiencing, especially if we are not the ones voting. <laughs> for um for the leadership that's currently in place and uh to really consider us as as a place to invest and a place to dig in in a national way in an international way because it will have profound consequences that ripple outward senator cook i can't thank you enough for your time awesome thank you so much allison and your music is so beautiful congrats <laughs> on doing with nikki so much fun <laughs> I'm so honored you took time to get political today. So thank you so much as well.